Good afternoon. We'll continue on the third part of uh, Robert Blake defending the evil confederacy. I say evil. I say I don't mean all people in it were evil. So don't get that wrong. Not everybody in the confederacy is evil. That's what he's trying, he's trying to associate. Well, these are some good people over here and they were defending this. No one's doubting it. But what they stood for was evil. These, these people can't distinguish concepts, people. There are good people on both sides of the issue. Good people on both sides. Good Christian people on both sides. So they think we say, well, the Confederacy, we should be saying everybody in the Confederacy. No. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that. But they try to twist that and say, you're saying everybody in the Confederacy is evil, so let's show some good people here who are really good Christians. We don't, we, we accept that. They're good people in the Confederacy. And everybody what was in the Confederacy wanted to defend slavery. But this is how you twist the history. So, again, what, 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 what Blake is doing is the same thing Antifa is doing, rewriting history. He's rewriting it. Inserting things that are true. I put, a, put up another video with some miscellaneous facts that uh, was dealing with some subjects. One, he talked about, uh, oh, the Jews... You know, the Jews must owe money to the, the blacks because the blacks are Egyptian, you know, the Egyptians. He says nationality. He associates with a race. He, says, he associates a, a nation with a race. It's, see how confused they are? Egypt, Egypt is a nation. It's not a race. It's composed primarily of a race, but it's a nation. And the Jews did receive for, for 400 years of slavery reparations. And they borrowed the money. They borrowed it. They borrowed the silver and gold. And that's what they built the tabernacle with. That's, the, that's the Exodus 11 too. And I give you the footnote from Hopkins. points out the companion verse to show it was borrowed. The modern versions, because they couldn't figure out the word borrowed, they thought the King James Bible was one. That's why these Mormons always think the King James Bible is one because they don't understand how, how uh, uh, smart the King James Bible translators are compared to they are. Uh, how compared they compared to how they are. They are. They, uh, they took the word borrowed and took the word ass. Oh, the king, they didn't borrow it. They, they asked. No, they borrowed. <laughs> so the King James Bible, let me tell you, let me translate. King James Bible translators understood the whole entire Bible. They don't just go into sections like these, these modern versions do. They don't, they don't look at other parts of the Bible. But anyway, let's get back to here. He's making an issue now. His, his, uh, history, a Southern Civil War soldier tells why, what he fought for. Okay. But what was what did the Confederacy what did the Confederacy stand for? It's not the issue of what a particular soldier fought for. The issue is what did the Confederacy stand for, people? It stood for the expansion of slavery. And in particular Negro slavery. They wrote it in their constitution. Which he'll never address. So we're about uh, 18 minutes in. It's a 48 minute video. My God, we made 10 videos on this thing. And then, then he'll complain I made 10 videos on him. He makes a 50 minute video. I'll make 10, 10 videos. And say, Ed's obsessing. He made 10 videos on me. He was shooting your lies. to 10 videos. In favor of the Confederate flag. You see, there are people yeah, that... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll grant that. So what? We don't have to do with anything. A lot of people are confused. <laughs> what does that have to do with a black man being he's in favor of the Confederate flag? What does that have to do with what the, what the Confederacy stood for? What does that have to do with anything? Nothing. And by the way, that would be his heritage. Okay, now look at hypocrisy here. They're always talking about the heritage and whites and blacks into marrying. He's afraid of losing his heritage. So if this man, if this man's daughter married a, a white man, would the heritage be affected? Because he certainly is for the Confederate heritage. No. <laughs> they support the same heritage. They're baloney, these guys. <laughs> but want to oversimplify history. No, we're not oversimplifying history. We're, we're explaining history as it is. The truth of history. Not looking for little 
things they can point out and say, look at that, look at this black man, he has a Confederate flag. What does that what does that mean? That means nothing. That doesn't mean the Confederacy didn't stand for sla uh, the expansion of Negro slavery. Because he can find a few black people who are willing to wear Confederate uniforms. They don't want to look at the truth. Yeah, we don't uh, look at the truth. You stop lying. I love H.K. Edgerton. I think he's an amazing fe fella. Mm -hmm. um, here we have uh, Civil War veterans. There's still a lot of videos you can go find of people that actually were in and fighting in the Civil War. Now, I'm going to be silent. I'm going to let this man speak. This is Julius Franklin Howell and his testimony of his fight in the Civil War in the South and what he fought for. And he says, I did not fight for slavery. So what? So what? There were plenty of Germans after the Germans lost World War II that said they were, they were not pro-Nazi. So what, Robert? It doesn't mean one thing. A lot of these people who are fighting didn't own slaves and they have duped into fighting because they're basically defending what they thought, well, oh, I got to defend my state, I got to defend, uh, you know, uh, you know, this, this, my, uh, my tradition, whatever. But the Confederacy stood for slavery. If it had won, Southern slave, uh, the, the, uh, the, the slaves, the Negro slavery would have been allowed to expand into the territories. It doesn't matter what the individual soldier was fighting for. It matters what the Confederacy stood for. Now, I know that takes some logic, Robert. You talk about simplistic. This is the most simplistic way of looking at history he's got here. Well, gee, I wasn't fighting for slavery, so must, the war must not have been about slavery, because I wasn't fighting for slavery. No. Read the Constitution. That's where you find out where they're fighting for. Their vice president, Stevens, wrote about what they were fighting for to overthrow the Declaration of Independence. He won't bring that speech up. He won't bring the speech up of, of Stevens. I think his last name was Stevens. Who said the, the Declaration of Independence was wrong. And the new, the new nation, the Confederacy, is going to be built on the truth of the inferiority of the black men. That's what the vice president of the Confederacy will. He will bring that up. Our country was invaded by a foreign country. and they You didn't have a country. It's not a country. It's the United States of America. You didn't have a country. He has to assume. He's begging the question. Secession is not legal. Your country. <laughs> Their country. They didn't have a country. It was the United States. And they were uh, disobeying the law just like they're doing in Antifa and Oregon. If Oregon may have said tomorrow, we're seceding from the Union, they wouldn't have a country. <laughs> it would still be Oregon. It would still be part of the Union. It doesn't matter what they say. Secession is illegal. We're here to subjugate us. Oh no, we hear, but you you subjugating three million black people is okay. It's okay for you to subjugate three million black people. <laughs> That's okay. They wanted to unturn our laws and they wanted to... What laws? Oh, you mean the slave laws. They want to overturn our laws. Oh, you mean the ones keeping slaves in bondage. Yeah, those laws. Take away what is ours. So let's oh, well, take away what is ours. The slaves. But he's not fighting for slavery. What laws? Tell us what laws that were taken away. Listen to this man. It's amazing that there is actually a witness from the Civil War who fought in the Civil War. Yeah, so what? It's amazing. We have a witness of the Confederacy Constitution, the Confederate Constitution. We have the, the uh, speeches of the Confederate leadership, like the Vice President denouncing the Declaration of Independence saying it was built on a wrong foundation of the idea of the universal equality of man. That's amazing. But he's going to go to this guy here and say, oh no, he wasn't fighting for sleep. After the Civil War ended, a whole movement got up 
woes in order to defend the idea, to get away from the idea that the, that the South was wrong and to start making up the lie that they were being, they, they, this was not an issue of slavery and that, and that uh, uh, it was that that was an issue. They had, just like, just like they tried to rewrite history in Nazi Germany. It wasn't about Nazi Germany, you know. You know they were, they were, you'd think there were no Nazis in Germany by the time the 1946 was around. No one was a Nazi. <laughs> no, I'm a Nazi. Here we go. My first recollection of public living, and okay. especially political living, as I may call it, was when I learned as a boy of nine or ten that my home was in in the state of Virginia. I didn't know about states before that time. Then time passed pretty rapidly because I was attending high school. And I remember distinctly the occasion when the John Brown, the poor man, sought freedom for the slaves. Now, by the way, John Brown was an abolitionist. He was a Universalist Unitarian minister. And yeah, and he was denounced by the North. And he was hung by Robert Lee, by the way. I mean, he was captured by Robert Lee. But the North denounced some people. They didn't want people revolting. So now he's talking about John Brown, who's an abolitionist. Yeah. What does that have to do with the Civil War? Nothing. Nothing. John Brown was denounced for what he did. He did not believe in the blood atonement of Christ. What does that have to do with anything? <laughs> like there weren't Christian abolition, uh, abolitions. Salvation. He believed in social justice. He believed in murder. He went. And he believed in murder. What he believed was freeing the slaves because they were they were people under subjection. And he believed the slaves needed to be freed. Now he took the wrong way of doing it. Because he thought, you know, the slaves would rise up. But the fact of the matter is, they were slaves. <laughs> he wanted to free them. He got a whole bunch of slaves and they went around and they murdered whole families. No, he got that wrong. He's got the wrong. They didn't murder whole families. He's got the wrong thing. I think he's talking about Nat Turner. Nat Turner revolt, which happened about maybe 50 years before that, and I was in the South. John Brown didn't revolt. Now, in the, in, in the bloody Kansas, that was going on. And he was involved in bloody Kansas, where they were fighting over who was going to control Kansas as a free state or a slave state. And so, yeah, there were a lot of atrocities going on there. He was an evil man, John Brown. But today they say, oh, what a great man he was. No, he was a murderer. But let's continue. He's there in my spirit. I heard about it pretty distinctly. I felt sorry and yet sympathizing with my elders. I felt some resentment. Now, while some in my section, Southeast Virginia... They hung the guy. What do you want me to do? <laughs> they hung... Yeah, they got sympathy for John Brown. They hung him. I knew of uh, some brutality, as I call it, exercised towards some of the Negro slaves. As a whole, the Negroes got along very well. Okay, there was some of you. Ah, the Negroes got along very well. They, they were slaves. Okay? They were beaten. They were subjugated. There were men trained, paid, to break slaves. They got along very well. They got along very well because they were, the slaves were in fear. In fear of the white people. Of slaves. Yeah. But as a whole. As a whole, yeah. This guy knows the whole whole. As a whole. How does he know the whole? We read the accounts of the blacks who say, oh yeah, we, we, <laughs> they were beating us. 
there wasn't a lot of people. Oh, yeah, there wasn't. People got along. You know, they got along. They got along. A white man told him about the black slaves getting along. I mean, the slave is, is basically broken so he can get along. You do what you, you're told to do, or we're hanging. That's getting along. This is a man who was there who saw Yeah, he saw, he saw everything. He knows everything. We have records of the slaves, too, people. Frederick Ter you know, uh, Fred, uh, is not Frederick, uh, Frederick, uh, gives an email. He wrote about it, too. Slaves wrote about the stuff, too, uh, 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 Robert. A witness from almost seven generations ago. Yeah, I, I have some other stuff I'll, I'll, I'll only bring up to talk about how the slaves uh, were treated. How they had guys rise up and, and break them. Beat them until they had no will left. It's like we're going and if they were, if they didn't, they were sold down the river. <laughs> That's what they call. They went to different. They just couldn't break them. Some way. Those time. are facts. They're not. Then no one's making that up, people. If you're going to subjugate three million people, you got to find a way to keep them under control. Were there some good slave ma uh, masters? I'm sure there were. I'm sure they were. But don't tell me that's the majority. That's the overall thing. Because that's what the big problem with the slaves that the South had was the Fugitive Slave Act. Slaves kept trying to escape with the Underground Railroad. If they're getting along so well, why, why are people trying to escape? The South was irritated because the North was allowing the slaves to come into the North and hide out. That was an irritant. One of the irritants that was brought up and when Lincoln was elected, he said he would even strengthen and enforce the Fugitive Slave Act because it was constitutional. But that was the great irritant. And they slave, the, so the, the people, the slaves, were called, uh, the whites were calling in the, uh, the uh, southern saying, states' rights. They had no problems going to northern states and trampling their states' rights. I've been talking to a man who was there. Now, yeah, yeah, so what? Got plenty of slaves who were there. They talked about the same thing, how they were beaten. Father Negroes, why I associated with them. That being the baby of the family, I didn't have any white children for associates. Therefore, I played around where the Negroes children. Yeah, 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 everybody knows that. Everybody knows they would play with each other, and the white children were often raised up by black, black women. Everyone knows that. Oh. That doesn't mean that the black families weren't broken up. If they were in financial difficulty or they had some problems, those children that were raised with that, that white child, he got sold. Four years passed by. Then came up the great struggle when the Republican Party had become a, a power in the land. Oh, there we go. There's Republicans. You know what that makes him? A Democrat. A Democrat. In 1860, Mr. Lincoln was elected, as you know. Oh, here we go. They wouldn't allow his name on the ballot. They wouldn't allow his name on the ballot because yeah, this, this is the South, you know. So we're, gonna, we're not going to allow a, a guy who's for, a, a, against the expansion of slavery on the ballot. And I remember that uh, there was a good deal of excitement in my section that the Negro slavery would be interfered with. Negro Ooh, you can't interfere with Negro slavery. That's our culture. This would be set free and all that. Well, I didn't feel much. See, it's about Negro slavery. Robert came and figured out his own, <laughs> his own video. Negro slavery was going to be interfered with. Not in the sense that uh, Lincoln was going to go in and take away the slaves or free the slaves, but in the sense that they weren't going to be allowed to expand slavery. And bring in any more slave states? I just about it because I, I felt kind of toward the doctors, and they were kind of toward me mm -hmm. and toward my family. Mm -hmm. So he was kindly toward black people, and black people sure. were kind toward him. Except when they tried to escape. He felt kindly to the black people. Let him try to escape. And then he tracked them down. Fugitive <laughs> Slave Act. Do you understand the concept, people? You see, you see what he's trying to defend? Again, there were people who love 
have rules of gym. No one's denying that. No one's denying that. That it could happen like that. Because you have that, you have that next, you have that in the uh, Old Testament, where the guy would stay with the master. He says, "Because I love my master." And the master, you know, if he left, he, he loses his family because the master, you know, wife and children and stuff. And he said, I love my master on the stay. And, he, and they put that oil in his ear. So little counts of that. No one's arguing against that. This is all straw men. This is all, this is Brian Denner all over. All these guys do stuff straw men. No one's arguing against that. If the issue is, what is the Confederacy for? What did it stand for? Not individual particular issues that we could point to and say, yeah, yeah, there's some issues. But they stood for something that was evil. He even Brian, Brian Breaker said he's not, he said he's not for slavery, but the Confederacy was. Sound like a racist? Now he did use the, the N word, but you know where that comes from? Let me oh, show you that in the Bible. The N word today, spelled with two G's, is actually in the Bible. And did you know that one of the uh, early followers of Jesus? One of the, actually, I think he was one of the um, Niger. Uh, early disciples. Maybe even was one of the... Um, was he one of the apostles? Anyway, it says in Acts 13.1, Now there were in the church that was Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simon that was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene and Manani, which were brought up to Herod the Tetrae and Saul. Here's a guy, Simon the Niger. Why is that? Because he's from Nigeria. Now today they spell it differently with two G's. And people say that's a bad word. But here it is in the Bible. And here was a man... It's a different word. It's two G's. One's G and one's G. It's two different words, Robert. <laughs> it's two different words. You nut. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Among all the other people of the church, they didn't look down on them, they didn't call them names, he was the with names. the people in the early church. So in Christ, there's no white or black. In Christ, there's no racism. Okay, but that's where the N-word comes from. Africa, Nigeria. Why don't you say the word if it's in the Bible? Why don't you say the word? If it's in the Bible, Robert, why are you saying the N-word? Because it's not the same word. It's not the same word, Robert. But you won't say the word, the N word. Because <laughs> yeah. they demonetize you real quick. Still there today. And here's a guy in the Bible, Simon the Niger. Now they pronounce it Ni with an I or a different I sound. Uh -huh. And two G's it's spelled uh -huh. today. Yeah. But let's continue. Yeah. But you won't say it. You say it's a Bible word, but you won't say it. It's not a Bible word. It's Niger. Well, Niger. It's not the same word. Now, I'm attending school, as I said, and then in the spring, spring of 61, when uh, news came that war was actually declared, in fact, it had been coming when South Carolina, as we heard, seceded from the Union. Well, what... And by the way, when South... Carolina met to talk about seceding from the Union. The Capitol was being worked on at the time, and they said, well, where can we meet that's a big place where we can all get together and talk? They met at the, at the um, Baptist Church in the Capitol, Columbia. So what? <laughs> this guy. Is he trying to Christianize everything? He's trying to Christianize the Confederacy. Give me a break. And my third great-grandfather was the pastor. Here we go. My third grade grandfather. What? Oh man, give me a break. These guys. Yeah, you go back and listen to this again. Here, go back. Well, what? And by the way, when South Carolina met to talk about seceding from the Union, the Capitol was being worked on at the time, and they said, well, where can we meet that's a big place where we can all get together and talk? They met at the, at the um, Baptist Church in the capital, Columbia. And my third great-grandfather... Third great-grandfather. This is, this is what I tell you about these people. His third great-grandfather. 
he he's talking about going back to 1860. This is what it's all about, people. These guys are so stuck in their clothes. Just look at the Brian Daniel and his idiocy. His German idiocy. Oh, my wife has German blood, therefore she likes the cold weather. This is the nuttiness you get from these nuts. My third great-grandfather. Get out of here! Your <laughs> third great-grandfather. The pastor at the time. Oh, he was the true. pastor. Oh, yeah, he was the pastor. Give me out. Who cares? Who cares, you, 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 you people are crazy. Jake this why he's defending it. This is all it's about. Defending something 300, you know, 150 years ago because his great-grandfather, great-great-grandfather was involved. I have to defend my great-great-grandfather, you know. That's why he grew beards. Brian Denver wants to look like his grandfather, so he goes a beard. He wants to look like his great-grandfather, he goes a beard. That's what they're going beards for, people. You think there's an accident? They all grow beards? <laughs> That's no accident. <laughs> no one cares about your great great grandfather. My heritage. That was the whole issue of interracial marriage. He didn't want to affect the interracial aspect of his heritage. But he saw a black man using a Confederate flag there. Well, couldn't he? Couldn't his daughter marry one of your sons? Your sons? And they share the same heritage. <laughs> What's that? What's that do race? And the Canty Breaker. He said the opening prayer before they all met to secede from mm -hmm. the Union. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. why did the people of South Carolina want to secede? Why? Because Lincoln said, I will uphold the moral tariff. And Which was legal. It was legally passed. I will uphold the tariff. And I will also stop the expansion of slavery. That was the issue. You have no right to leave the country, uh, secede from the country because you don't like a tariff. There's no right to secession. They had the Senate. This, the Confederacy still controlled the Senate. They can block things. There are ways to block things. It was a tax, a tariff. M O R R. That was legitimate. That was the only tax America had, by the way, people. Most keep in context. There was no income tax. Tariffs paid for what what the country had to pay for. Now tariffs f fell heavily on exporting parts of the, United, uh, of, the, of the United States, which was the South. The South were exporters of cotton. So if you had high tariffs, it's likely that Britain would, would raise tariffs, which would make the cotton more expensive in Britain. That's why the exporters, the exporting part of the country didn't like tariffs. They wanted, free, you know, total free trade because they wanted, you know, the, the, uh, not for Britain to make sure not to retaliate with their tariffs. But tariffs was the only way to pay for the, 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 uh, the nation. That's how they, they funded, you know, things in the country. What was going on, you know, the, the government expenses. There were no taxes. No individual income tax. Nothing. You know, In terms of national, uh, national taxation, that was how the national government paid for national issues. Yeah, of up to forty something percent upon the people. Yeah, and it was legal. It got past Congress, so you had better laws of the government. But the real issue was the expansion of slavery. So I, I, it's interesting to me that uh, 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 why wasn't Lincoln's name on the ballot in the South? It wasn't over tariffs. It was over slavery. My ancestors. Oh, my ancestors. There we go, people. Ancestor worship. My ancestors. Wow. He was a preacher. And by the way, he was a Baptist preacher that cared about black people. As a matter of fact, I'm sure he, he did. Got a lot of black people saved and baptized a lot of black people. He was not a racist. He was actually a person that cared mm -hmm. about people of color. He was forbidden. Blacks were forbidden to go to churches with whites by that time, 1860. So I'll break his line to you if he tells you blacks were in, in these churches. They were forbidden to have Bibles. They were forbidden to be taught to, uh, to, re to, taught, be taught read, uh, reading and writing. Because they, they're by that time... The people of the South were feeling the blacks because uh, the, the, the they turn up everybody. And so they cracked down on that stuff. And it was very hard to free a slave by that time. 
and did his best to win him to Jesus. Uh, if it, if anything, he was a good man. And then now, what Mr. Lincoln... What's that doing? A good man on both sides. No one ever said otherwise. No one ever said otherwise. Lincoln never said otherwise. That there were good people on both sides of this issue. See how you try to blame it, say everybody goes, let me say everybody, you know, we know there are good people on both sides. But that's not the point. The point is, what was the Confederacy for? What was it standing for in the Constitution, Robert? Why don't you address the issue of the Constitution? That it would allow expansion of Negro slavery into the territories. Why don't you discuss that? That if they had won the war, Southern uh, uh, Negro slavery would have been expanded. It wouldn't have ended. It would have expanded into into the, uh, the territories by law, by Confederate law. Will do when he is uh, seated on the presidential chair. Well, there's a variety of feeling about it, even among our 75 or 100 young men, boys. He's mentioned the tariffs. Robert, he mentioned that he was, Lincoln was in the field of slavery. He's using this guy as a witness, people. The guy hasn't mentioned the tariffs. The guy mentioned what Lincoln was going to do with slavery. He brings up the tariffs because that's the old neo-confederate baloney. This guy was a witness to it. He says, this guy Lincoln's getting elected. He's going to interfere with our slaves. At school. But right at once, and what was declared, about half of our pupils, young men over 18, quit school, joined companies of uh, infantry, cavalry, and... By the way, it was a brutal war. People under the age of 18 joined. And he's telling yeah, it was a brutal war, yeah. No one thought it was going to last that long. That's what Lincoln said in the second novel. No one thought this war uh, would last for four years and cost 600,000 dead. He has your reparations. That many of the people that were in school with him, 16, 17 years old. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, 11, 12... 13-year-old kids, sometimes 7, 8-year-old boys would be the drummer boy. And they would walk out in the front and be drumming and, and, and were slaughtered. It was an awful war that Lincoln started. Oh, we started, Lincoln started it. Oh, you liar. You foul mouth liar. Oh, you liar. Lincoln started it, huh? Oh, you, you rotten no good liar. No, it was the South. It was South Carolina firing on the flag that started the war. They fired on the flag of the United States. That's what started the war. Lincoln didn't start anything. In their homes, in surrounding counties, and in that vicinity. I want Still no word about the tariff, Robert. Why doesn't this guy mention the tariff? He mentioned Lincoln interfering with the Negroes. Right? Negro slavery, black slavery, slavery, what do you want to call it? He didn't say one word about tariff shit. Where'd that come from? You, you look at men as a witness. Oh yeah, we've got that war because those tariffs were on us and we had to end those tariffs. Where's that? Robert says he can let this guy speak for himself. Where did the tariffs show up? They were mad at Lincoln because he was going to interfere with slavery. I to go too. But my father said, Now son, you're too young. I was just 15. That's where we passed. And if the war continues long enough, you may have an opportunity. Well, so I rested. And the war began. And I heard about it. And I heard that at William Battle of Williamsburg, some of my classmates fell in the battle there. Well, I grieved about that because they were boys that I'd been brought up with. They were a little older than I. But I felt sorry that they were killed. Then, in 62, although General Lee had still a pretty good army... So notice, he mentioned one of the tariffs. Lincoln came, came to power and he's, they were concerned about him interfering with slavery. He didn't say one word about tariffs, people. If that were the issue, that's where he would have brought up. Yeah, these Yankees, they passed out tariff law and we couldn't allow that. Can you mention it? Robert Breaker mentions it. Because he's a liar. He began to need more men 
in, naturally. Although the big battles, or the largest battles, have not come yet. But my neighbors around there, some of them who were over 45, kinsmen of mine, some of them, began to uh, just get up, to get up a, a company of cavalry. And I, a boy of 16 and a half years old, joined the cavalry company, which afterwards was attached and counted with others among the 24th Virginia Cavalry. Now, for a long time then, from August 62 on, until 64, great battles had been fought in there. We heard of the Battle of Gettysburg. And finally, our corps, our camp company, was taken away from the Blackwater border, guarding this, that section of the country from the in fact, in incursions of federal soldiers who might cross the Blackwater River and the Chuan and come over into Confederate territory. We were taken in the spring of 64, our regiment was, uh, in the neighborhood of Petersburg. And while we were camped just north of Petersburg, General Grant began his invasion of that part of Virginia. We heard about it. Notice what he called it, an invasion. Because legally the South seceded, according to the... Uh, there's no legal secession, Breaker. There's no legal secession in, in the Constitution. Jackson saw it. When the South was talking about, South Carolina was talking about seceding, and they had tariff issues back in Jackson's day. Jackson said if they try to secede, Cal Calhoun, Andrew Calhoun, I think, uh, Calhoun, I fear is his first name, was talking about seceding. He said, oh, hang on. <laughs> That's Andrew Jackson. Probably the only good Democrat ever was president. Uh, Cleveland. Uh, 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 Cleveland was a good Democrat. The Constitution, that you could, at any time, legally secede from the Union. It was a loose affiliation of states. No, it wasn't. That was the Articles of Confederation. It wasn't a loose co uh, a coalition of states. That's the confederacy. confederacy. This was a union. That's why it begins with the people in order to establish a more perfect government. Better than the Articles of Confederation, which was loosely constructed. This guy is a liar. You can't secede now. Try secession, secede. You can't. It's not legal. It's not the same constitution. Constitution hasn't changed. So why doesn't somebody give someone to secede? No, you can't secede. Because secession is not, is not in the Constitution. They went to, uh, they went to the, uh, uh, tenth, uh, you know, the tenth article in the uh, Bill of Rights and said, you know, all power invested back in the states. That's into its secession. And so the South became their own nation. No, the South didn't become their own nation. They were illegal. They were illegal. They had no right. And then they, then they took over federal property, which did not belong to them. Federal armories. Those were federal, that was federal property that all the states had paid for. And they stole that stuff. And they were attacked. They were invaded <laughs> by... This guy, man. This guy. And I remember very distinctly. One How many more lies is this guy going to tell you? And you're going to believe. Secession is not legal. Robert Lee knew that. <laughs> he said, no, he's secession. Articles of Confederation, they, they, they moved from the Articles of Confederation to the Constitution because the Articles of Confederation was too weak. No country would ever have in, a, in its, in its, uh, 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 in its uh, makings up, its organization, the right to a, a group to secede. The Confederacy didn't have it either. They didn't say anything. Oh, a state can secede for any any reason they want. You can't. You couldn't survive that way. You have to go through a, a procedure. Well, if you don't like something, okay. You deal with it next election. Morning, we heard that General Lee had crossed James up north and was coming down the Turnpike Road to, in the direction of Petersburg, just near us. And... The next morning, happening to look, I was on guard, across the James River, 
There we saw long lines of blue. Now, the infantry of the, of the Army and the United States flags on the other side of the James coming down to the beyond the mouth of the Appomattox River that flows into the James and in order to cross on the pontoon bridges and thus begin the invasion of that part of Virginia and in the city of Petersburg. Thus, I was not with that part of the army. My regiment was moved up north of Virginia, out of Richmond, I mean, north of Richmond, and thus we guided that city for several months while General Lee and General Grant were struggling there near Petersburg. While that was going on, there were some skirmishes and one, well, small battle I was in. I was not in any of the large, larger battles, probably fortunately, maybe unfortunately. I'm starting to spin, so let me uh, stop here about uh, 29 minutes in, 30 minutes in, and uh, put this up. Guy just keeps lying. So, there's no legal secession, people. They were arguing this back and forth. Calhoun talked to talk, 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 talk about it, and Jackson said, no, there's no way. The Founding Fathers never intended that there be a way for states just to pull out legally. They formed a, a common, a united, because that's why it starts with the people. We are a united people, not states, united people. And the Arkansas Confederation was seen as being too weak. They were afraid that these foreign nations would come and divide the nations. Of course, Blake is going to tell you that the one nation, quote unquote, that recognized the Confederacy was the Vatican. <laughs> you won't answer that one. So let me stop with this up and uh, try to get to the end of this thing. And again, he thinks it's important enough to lie to you about it. I'm gonna th I think it's important enough to tell you the truth about it. That's why I'm doing it. He thinks it's enough to put a video up to lie to you about it. But I think it's, enough important, it's important enough to tell you the truth about what's going on. He just had a whole thing about the tariff as being the issue. And the guy doesn't mention the tariff once. He mentions he's going up and says, yeah, I heard we hear about some guy Lincoln, he's going to come up to and he's going to feel it all, you know, all slaves and stuff. So, well, the word tariff doesn't come out of his mouth. The tariff stuff is all made up. Now, did they like it? No, they were irritated by it. They, you know, they understood they, this was money involved and the cotton was going out and they were afraid, you know, the, the British were going to raise uh, tariff prices and against them and retaliation and stuff. Yeah. But it was passed legally. Nothing illegal about it. And of course, what, uh, uh, one thing Lincoln, uh, you know, believed, it was a Whig, and he believed, it was an old Whig, he was a Republican, he believed in internal, internal improvements. So he needed money to pay for that. So that's how he got the money tariffs. There was no, there was no individual income tax then. But that's why you have elections. But they, you know, they weren't, didn't know, uh, they weren't stopping Lincoln's name from getting on the ballot because of his tariffs. They, they stopped his name because he had people in the South, you know, Whigs, who for tariffs. They stopped his name getting on the ballot because he was a Republican who was against the expansion of slavery. And then he says, Lincoln started the war? Lincoln started the war. No, the Confederates started the war when they fired on our flag at Fort Sumner. Oh, he maneuvered the ships in there. You know, they took over federal property. Fort Sumner was federal property. They fired on federal property. They were in active rebellion. A revolution. Which they had no grounds for. They didn't have any case against the... the uh, they had a government. They were represented by the government. They were representing the government, unlike the colonists. They had... Everything was going. They had this, they basically still controlled the Supreme Court. Although you know a lot of these guys were getting old, but they you know they you know Tanya was still there, and they still controlled the Supreme Court. They still had the uh, you know the Senate. They were terrified. They saw the, they saw the trend. They saw what was going on. If, they, if if the slave states were limited, they would lose that control eventually because free states would outnumber slave states. 
So he says, no, I'm not gonna, we're not going to allow that. We're going to just rebel. Or we're going to just take, you know, reject. Because Lincoln got elected. That's the same thing with Trump. These guys won't accept the election. So they're going crazy. Because, you know, Trump is against the whole global new order and the deep state. And so they won't accept them. And it's what all this is fussed about. This is why they won't, they're, they're in an insurrection. They will not accept the consequences, the results of an election. And in order for a democracy to survive, the other side, both sides must accept the reality of winning and losing. And wait for the next time to come up and say, okay, that's why midterm elections, the founding fathers were so smart about having a two-year mid midterm election, because very often the, the, out, the party that's outside has lost less election will come in and make big gains in midterm election and get regain some power. So it allows a very short range where the, the party the, the party that's out of power or party is basically, you know, lost less election can in two years can come back in and, and basically still, you know, redress the, address things and, and get, get back you know, get back in uh, you know, get back in uh, some some type of, of, of power. Uh so, power government, uh, particular po political parties usually don't have much, a long time, to rule without an opposition party showing up and 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 and, and, and you know battling it out with them. But we start put this up, and we'll go to the fourth part in the end. Don't complain. Don't whine. This is history, but he though is important enough to bring this and live at it. We're gonna bring up it up. We're going to bring it up and address his lies. i got the other video going up, some facts. You can link it, start the war. <laughs> An invasion. I don't care what these people thought. These guys up in Oregon think that's their country. Oh, Oregon. No, Oregon's a state of the union. It has to follow federal law. That's why these sanctuary cities. They're illegal. They're illegal. They still have the right to still develop their own sanctuary cities. And you see the result of this is what happens now. Now people fight for the Second Amendment now saying we're going to develop our own sanctuary cities for, against the states who are trying to take away our guns. That's what you get. They went developing now little groups saying, you know, okay, there's your sanctuary city for illegal immigrants. Now our sanctuary city is for, you know, for the Second Amendment. So each, we'll have we'll have uh, we'll have secession against secessions, uh, cities seceding from states, state you know parts of states seceding from other parts of states. It's chaos. So let me start put this up. Amen. Thank you.